that was the third in a row in all. Well, aren't you a dashing young man? <laughs> May I ask your name? Sherlock Holmes, at your service. I'm Lady Carr, uh, but please. Call me Miriam. How have I never seen you at any of my parties? Oh, you've missed out on so much fun. The latest one was a blast. First, a magic show. And then, to everyone's surprise, an audacious burglary. I beg your pardon, Lady Carve, but why are you so excited? Wasn't it your house that was burgled? Uh, let me ask you. Have you ever witnessed a crime at a party? Of course not. But my guests have. Oh, it was a night to remember. Everyone's gone home, but at least I have these fine gentlemen here to keep me company. This looks quite lax for a police investigation. I'm sure the officers are eager to sink their teeth into the case, but I thought a small aperitif wouldn't hurt. Nothing like a little champagne to get the brain working, I say. Could you be more specific? What exactly happened? Well, there were drinks and hors d'oeuvres, followed by more drinks, of course. And then we gathered to watch the amazing Alonso saw himself in half. Oh, it was breathtaking. Some guests had to be revived with smelling salts. Then I invited everyone upstairs to see Abel's collection of curios. And there, someone had stolen Abel's treasure. Who is Abel? Your husband, I take it? Yes. My Abel is a famous, uh, what do you call it, uh, astrologist. He travels the world, digging up saucy sculptures, old chamber pots, that kind of thing. <laughs> you boys and your silly hobbies. You mentioned a treasure. <laughs> Frankly, I have no idea what it is. Some kind of shell the size of a dinner plate. Didn't look that valuable to me. Abel brought it back from America, a place called Massachusetts or something. You mean Massachusetts? Yes, Massachusetts, that's what I said. He's been strangely obsessed with it ever since. Locked it inside a chest like some treasure. <laughs> Poor Abel, he's going to be so upset when he returns. I'd like to take a look upstairs where the burglary took place. Certainly, be my guest. Such panache. You have to see it to believe it. Shards of a broken bottle. That must have been one wild party. Oh gosh, I feel sorry for the housemaid. Lady Calf certainly spares no expense.
An industrial looking saw, I imagine it's fairly loud. Alonso must be a short, lean person to be able to fit inside. This deceptively simple box is actually an elaborate apparatus. The saw was working for several minutes to build up tension in the audience. This ribbon bears faint traces of soot. Short brown hair without a root. Well, there ain't any rabbits in this hat. Sir, sir, only just wash the upstairs floor. Just stay down here until it dries. Looks like a leaf from a fruit tree. Botany is not exactly my forte, but it could be a pomegranate, possibly. I'm not half bad, am I? Hm. You have to admire the gall. This doesn't make sense. Why haul this machine up here if one could just steal the chest? To saw the chest and mask the sound, the thief used the same equipment as in the magic trick and at exactly the same time. Quite certain that you don't want to drink, Mr. Ho. That's it, a pomegranate. <sighs> the 
This ladder's pretty long. Long enough to reach the first floor. These gardening clothes look dirty, but those aren't grass stains. It's paint. These are fake. Large boot, size 9. The rubber is very thin, too thin for actual gardening work. I can tell you how the crime occurred, Mum, but first, if you'll indulge me, you don't have a full-time gardener, do you? No, I don't. Why, do you think the lawn needs mowing? Your lawn is perfectly fine. I just wanted to confirm my theory. The thief was disguised as a gardener in order to blend in with the servants. He used a ladder to climb up to the first floor and later escape. But the sawing? Surely we would have been alerted by the sound. Ah, this is where it gets interesting. You see... The thief timed it precisely to match Alonso's performance. Evidently, he knew the trick inside out. Golly gosh, that makes it even more extraordinary. Mr. Holmes, you are a delight. You absolutely must come to my next shindig. I can't think of anything I'd rather do less, but this investigation is far from over. Farewell. My apologies, but I am not in the mood for visitors. Not after the debacle that was my last auction. Stolen from by my own valet. Bitten by the viper I nursed in my bosom. Oh, the indignity. Oh, drama indeed. My name is Sherlock Holmes and I could help you get to the bottom of this. Oh, Sir Finley Lane. Philanthropist, industrialist, art collector. It is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Holmes. I suppose I could use your help, if only to confirm my suspicions about Vincent. Could you tell me more about Vincent? <laughs> a scoundrel with one leg and two faces. He's been my valet for a dozen years. Who would have thought that he would stoop so low as to steal from me? Vincent has only one leg. He lost his right leg in the Crimean War. But despite his age and his peg leg, he's actually quite spry on his, uh, on his foot. I took him in, gave him a job, and this is how he repays me. What happened at the auction? I intended to sell the gem of my collection, Cordona Cypresses, to fund an orphanage. God knows we need to take some of these poor waifs off the streets. To entertain my guests before the bidding, I arranged a magic show. When it was over, I went upstairs to the gallery, and it was gone. 
The cypresses were gone! Did your guests enjoy the show? Oh, yes. The amazing Alonso is well worth the money. The orange trick was nothing short of amazing. Everyone was completely enthralled. So you suspect your valet of stealing the painting? There's no one else to suspect. He's the only person other than myself who was upstairs that day. He had asked for a day off only the night before, so I was a little surprised when he came here just before the auction. Did he tell you why? Something about a damaged wallpaper roll. I'm refurbishing some rooms, you see, but that's his job. I, I don't bother myself too much with the details. I'd like to take a look upstairs where the burglary took place. Well, mm, you look like a decent man, Mr. Holmes. Here's the key to my gallery. It's the only copy, so please don't lose it. These are real sweet-smelling oranges, not props. There are traces of concealer on the rim. Pushing this button makes the oranges grow within seconds. Secret compartments are hidden amongst the fake foliage. Nothing but a clever illusion. These must be the names of the contributors. Pretty big for an orphanage. An ambitious project. The frame is intact, he took only the canvas. Oh, someone spilled the paint. Mind your step, Sherry. Paint splatters on the plank and floor don't match up. Oh, fella's only got one leg. Can't blame him. Right, footprint, size 9. Cordona Cypresses, Angelo Cicchetti, 1840. The ends in Miner's End. The end of what? Of some miners, apparently. 
It doesn't matter who squeezes the oranges, what matters is who gets the juice. The thief entered the house, disguised as Vincent, removed his fake peg leg, and walked across the plank to the gallery where he stole the painting. Your valet is innocent, Sir Finlay. In fact, he wasn't even here on the day of the auction. But I saw him with my own eyes. The man you saw was disguised as Vincent, with both his legs present and extremely capable. As you were engrossed in the show, he walked across a plank to the gallery right above your heads. An acrobatic feat of no mean proportions. My good old Vincent, in truth, I didn't doubt him for a second. Do you know who the brazen thief is? Not yet, Sir Finley, but rest assured I will find him. I would be much obliged if you'll recover my painting too. Just think of all the urchins who would get a chance at honest work. Wait a moment. I thought you were planning to fund an orphanage, not a workhouse. Bah! Workhouse. What an outdated notion. The orphans will be fed, clothed and educated. Yes, they will also learn an honest trade. What's the harm in that? Surely it's better than picking pockets and begging on the streets? With all due respect, Sir Finley, this is exploitation of child labour, no matter how you look at it. You're entitled to your opinion, sir, but the fact remains the painting belongs to me, and what I do with it is nobody's business but my own. Thank you, and good day. Who do you think you are, barging in here like this? Another hack writer from the Chronicle here to mock my misfortune? I will not tolerate your lampooning. I have no intention of mocking you, and I am no hack writer. 
My name is Sherlock Holmes. Holmes? The name sounds familiar. Are you perhaps related to that brilliant young man, Mycroft Holmes? My late husband, Sir Ralph, spoke very highly of him. Yes, indeed. He is my brother. I am sorry for your loss, Lady Gruber. Loss isn't the word for it. It's an outrage. It was a black pearl necklace, not some mere bauble. Actually, I meant your, um... Never mind. What happened exactly? What happened? I was robbed, for heaven's sake. While my guests and I were enjoying the amazing Alonzo show, a thief broke in through the window and stole my necklace. Do you suspect anyone? One of your guests, perhaps? Good heavens, no. My soirees are strictly for Codona's creme de la creme, very far removed from the debaucheries of that libertine Lady Calf. Do I suspect Lady Vaughan, the governor's own cousin, or the right honourable Lord Crane, or Lieutenant Colonel Wolfe from Dorset? Preposterous! It was a magic show, yes? Oh, yes. Alonzo turned cards into butterflies. An impressive spectacle. Everyone loved it. Lieutenant Colonel Wolfe became so excited he had a coughing fit. I had to send him to the guest room to catch his breath. I'd like to take a look at the crime scene. Please go ahead, Mr. Holmes. I haven't touched anything whilst waiting for the police. Those laggards do take their time, don't they? Ah, oh, this Alonzo enjoys changing faces as much as you do. A hint of gravitas on my wardrobe. This bedroom looks more like a treasury. Or a dragon's lair. Even asleep, she's guarding her precious hoard. The glass and the locking bars are intact. The window sill is perfectly clean. All the other jewellery is untouched, but why? This butterfly must have seen something. Come on, little chum. Spill it. How did it get here? These cards are carefully arranged. The thief is trying to tell us something. The audience don't notice the secret compartment hidden behind all the cards. Pushing this button swaps the upper and lower compartments and releases the butterflies. Signed by someone from the audience, I think.
The Lieutenant Colonel picked the lock to the bedroom and opened the window to make it look as though someone broke in. The thief didn't break in through the window, as he would have you believe, Lady Gruber. He picked the lock of the door from the guest room. It seems as though Lieutenant Colonel Wolfe has sticky fingers. But why would someone of his station commit such a crime? He's a reputable man, a commander of the Dorset Regiment's 3rd Battalion. Did he introduce himself to you as such? Why, yes. He was such a debonair gentleman, a brilliant raconteur. And an imposter to boot, a thief in wolf's clothing, so to speak. But, Mr Holmes, that is a serious accusation. The Dorset Regiment has only two battalions, Lady Gruber. What are you saying? I need to sit down. Well, you know, I may catch the thief yet. Until then, I bid you farewell. You must be the amazing Alonzo. Sir, if you want to book a show, unfortunately, that is not possible. All of my props have been confiscated until further notice. And if you are here to ask me about those burglaries, I have nothing to add to what I've already told the police. It wasn't me. I'm investigating the burglaries in Grand Sarre. The clues led me to this atelier, but I did not expect to see you here. Someone has clearly been playing tricks on you. Cruel tricks. It's good to know that you're on my side. I'm here seeking answers the same as you. The person behind this knows my tricks well. So well that it's uncanny. The thing is, I used to practice here back when the atelier was in business. Some of my props are still in the basement. And the answers are too, I think. What are you waiting for, then? Look around you. This neighborhood is a criminal's paradise. The building is overrun by bandits. What should I tell them? Don't mind me, fellas. I'll be in and out. Let me compliment you on your disguise. Especially the mustache. Thank you kindly. I wouldn't call it a disguise, though. Alonzo is my stage persona. But the mustache is indeed fake. Guilty as charged. Mine is a slow grower. Miss, please. I can see that you're a woman. Very well, I am a woman. 
So what? I've learned all my own tricks. I want to be taken seriously, rather than as someone's jumped-up assistant. Do you really think that if I didn't put on this act, I'd bask in the glory of being the world's first female magician? Actually, that sounds quite plausible. Huh, that's easy for you to say. Sometimes, if we want to be true to ourselves, we have to pretend to be someone else. My friend told me this once, and I think that he's right. It strikes me as rather dubious reasoning. Who is this friend of yours? A close friend, who recently arrived from France. Let's leave it at that. You may have exposed me, but I simply don't see how my personal life is relevant. Fine. I'll go inside and see if I can find something. Don't go anywhere. Simple. Time to knock this guy out. No more. Give him the pepper snuff. Excuse me. Don't cry, you'll live. The snuff's ready. Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. Take this! No, oh, you killed him! Don't cry, you'll live. The snuff's ready. That easy. I'm coming for you. Oh. Oh. Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. Could have kept him alive. Don't bother moving. The snuff's ready. So little light for these little fellas. The same oranges as we saw at Lane's house. Timed to perfection.
The saw was tested on different materials, most meticulous. These must be the diagrams of all the magic tricks in the amazing Alonzo's arsenal. You're getting warmer, Mr. Sholmes. Warmer still. Join me at the fireplace. Warmer still, join me at the fireplace. Cordona cypresses and a bonus wallpaper roll. So, what did you find? You won't like what I have to say, but you deserve to know. Your French friend, Arsène Lupin, used this place as a hideout. No, no, that can't be true. He, he's staying at Il Palazzo del Luce. He's there at this minute. But how do you know his name? It is my business to know things, miss. He is the thief. This was all some twisted joke to him. No, th this is just... this can't. He was the only one who understood me. He said that he loved me. I don't believe that you'll ever see him again. He has slipped away from the island. Good riddance to him, then. All men are the same, aren't they? They come and go, leaving nothing behind but lice. Well, he also left the stolen painting. It would be best if you return the painting to its rightful owner, Sir Finley Lane. You will clear your name, and he will build his orphanage. You are right. I will do that. I never asked your name. It's Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. I am Melinda Teller. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. You're welcome, Miss Teller. Good luck. Mm -hmm.